Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer from Practical Arduino. One of the devices that we did get to cover in the book is the Wii Shield from Async Labs. Now I've got to say up front, I think these things are brilliant. I've bought, I think, about 12 or 14 of them so far and used them in all sorts of different things. They're just fantastic. So let me count the ways that I adore thee. Um, and they're not perfect. There are a couple of downsides. We'll get to that in just a second. Firstly, the, um, the board itself is quite small and so it doesn't take up a lot of length. It's, it's been made as short as they could get it basically within um, the constraints of the headers. And it's also very low profile. They've been careful to use components that all sit flat against the board and because it comes with stacking headers that makes it really convenient to add other things on top of it. So I've used these for things like uh, power meters where we have an Arduino, then we have the Wii Shield sitting on top of it, then a prototyping shield sitting on top of that with the data acquisition connections. And these things just work brilliantly. Now they have full, um, full support for WPA2, which is quite surprising really, because you don't really think of low-end um, microcontrollers and things like that having good encryption. And the thing is that it supports all of the encryption within the device, which means you don't have the burden on the 80 mega CPU itself of doing all of that hard work. So from the CPU's point of view, or from the Arduino's point of view, it doesn't really have to do all that much. It basically just sends some configuration values to the Wii Shield itself. Wii Shield negotiates with the Wi-Fi network and does all of the encryption, handshaking, all of that sort of thing. And it just works. It's brilliant. So we use this um, around my office, actually, at Internet Vision Technologies. We have um, WPA encryption on our Wi-Fi network. And I have sensor nodes running with these. We have Arduinos with these plugged in and then data acquisition. And then what I'm doing is running a web client so that it just connects to a web service and sends sensor data uh, up to a server. Fantastic little things. And um, I, I did mention that there were a couple of downsides to it. Firstly, they're pretty expensive. They're not exactly cheap. If you compare, well, the, the fact is that you can buy a, um, a low-end ASUS broadband router with Wi-Fi and you know, four Ethernet ports on it for 50 bucks. These things are in the order of about $80 just for this. And so, yeah, they're kind of expensive. It can become a little bit hard to justify, but for ease of use, if you have a corporate network or even just a home network or something running WPA, and you want to connect an Arduino into it with minimal fuss, these things are the way to go. It costs a little bit, but once you put it all together, all you have to do is set the network configuration, you power it up, it joins your network, and it's done. You don't have to do anything unusual. You don't need um, a special center network or anything like that. You don't need any other node at the other end other than your regular Wi-Fi router. Now, the driver itself comes with a, um, a couple of different um, versions. And it comes with both web client and web server, and there are a couple of different versions of that. I won't go into that, but there's a whole bunch of information about it on the Async Labs uh, wiki. Now, the drivers. This is one of the downsides. The driver themselves, or the module itself, or the library, is nicely written. And you can implement a web client or a web server very easily. One of the annoying things, though, is that what the library does is wrap a... Uh, a proprietary driver for the actual hardware itself. And that means that it can't be distributed all as one block because it's not available under a compatible open source license. So when you want to set this up in your IDE, you have to install the WeShield library itself, then you have to go off to the third party site, download the driver and install it. And so it's a little bit of fiddling around. It's not quite as straightforward as just downloading a, um, a single driver or a, or a library and installing it in your IDE. You have to do a little bit of stuffing around, but it's not too bad. I mean, it, it only takes a couple of minutes, and there are really good instructions on the WeShield website, on the Async Labs website. So all you have to do is basically follow the bouncing ball, put the files where it tells you to put them, and everything should work. It should be good. Now, the other little downside of this is that there is no marking anywhere on the board itself to show which of the pins are in use. This is one of my bugbears of shield design. Now, I should be able to pick up a shield, and if I want to add anything else to it, like say, put a prototyping shield on top, run some other I.O., just look at it and say, oh, yeah, I can't use pins 8, 9, 10, 11 because they've been used by this shield. With this, you can't. You have to go to the manufacturer site, look at the schematic, 
follow it through. And because the pinouts haven't been brought out to you know, a, nice, a nice row down one edge, you can't very easily see which pins are in use. So you have to go trawling through the schematic trying to figure out which ones have been allocated for the circuit, and which ones are free for you to use. So what would be really nice, Async Labs, if you're listening, please, on the next revision, put a little asterisk or something next to the pins that are in use so that all um, a user has to do is look at the board and they know which ones are being used by the Wii Shield and then they know which ones are free for use in their own projects. If you did that, totally kill a product. Very, very nice. So um, I'm, saying, I'm talking about a couple of downsides here, but on the whole, I love these boards. As I say, I've bought about 12 or 14 of them and I use them in all sorts of things. So if you want to add Wi-Fi to an Arduino-based project, this is the way to do it. Very, very slick, very well-made board, great production quality. Um, I really highly recommend these things. I love them.